as we step into our first Sunday of February, first Sunday of Black History Month. A sermon that's been long waiting has arrived. And I wanna thank Reverend Ron Botts, who shared with me the Afro-Christian Convention, the fifth stream of the United Church of Christ, edited by, edited by one of the true lights of the United Church of Christ, Reverend Dr. Yvonne V. Delk. And so I'm grateful that this book is here and we should all study it, read it, learn it. I'm afraid if I share it with any of you and leave, have it leave my hands, it will stay out there and I have to get it back to run. But I also thank Jackie Dean for bringing me The Hidden Histories by Barbara Brown Zuckman, a book that I've read often, but with great interest in um, the writing of Percival Alston. So this is our fifth stream. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. On June 25th, 1957, the founding mothers and fathers processed from Cleveland's public square to the music hall as the United Church of Christ was born and began to breathe life. There were leaders in the procession from the Evangelical and Reformed Church representing German immigrants coming to the shores of America seeking economic well-being and freedom from oppression. There were leaders in the procession from the congregational churches composed of pilgrims who left their homes in England in the 1620s looking for religious freedom. There were leaders in the procession representing the first indigenous American denomination, the Christian Church, which was born on these shores as an evolving experiment in faith and democracy. These all represented the four streams of the United Church of Christ as it was born that day. But there was a fifth stream that was present on June 25th, 1957, and was not acknowledged that day. In that procession, perhaps lost in the crowd to many, was Reverend J. Taylor Stanley, credited for bringing the Convention of the South into the United Church of Christ. This convention represented most of the black congregations in this newly birthed denomination. The Convention of the South had been formed in 1950 bringing together the black congregational churches and the churches of the Afro-Christian Convention, which represented a majority of churches in this conference. Lost to most, except for any and all people in the Convention of the South, was that our denomination was formed by five streams, not four. This stream was separate and equal to all the other streams. Thanks be to God for our five streams of the United Church of Christ. We must now and forever teach, learn, refer to the five streams of the United Church of Christ, not the four. No new members class, no confirmation class should ever talk of four again. We made this stream invisible for too long and never again. The entrance of the black church into the United Church of Christ is something with which we should all shout for joy from the rooftops. We have for too long sifted our history, knowingly and unknowingly, through the racist lens of exclusion. I confess my own ignorance and exclusion until my friend, Jackie Dean, awakened me. I think it was with a cold ice challenge, Jackie, wasn't it? to the truth. This was 10 years ago. So I've been awake to this for a while. It might be true for others of you who care about the history of our denomination as well. What was is past and what is will never be forgotten. From this day forward and forevermore, five streams will flow through us. And this will always be true for our children, for our grandchildren and all who join us on our journey of faith into the future. Five are better than four. Five streams are blessed forevermore. According to Reverend Dr. Yvonne Delk, 
In this book that I shared, one of the reasons the black church experience was buried and lost to most people was because it was filtered through a white perspective without an understanding of the distinct history, the organizational structures, the local church governance structures or styles of worship of the black churches in the convention. Back to the origins of the Convention of the South, there were 150 churches that made up the convention with more than 25,000 members, 185 ordained pastors. And I always love this, 150 Sunday schools. So everywhere where there was a church, there was a Sunday school, but they stand distinctively separate and important as the Sunday schools as well. And they were all in Virginia and North Carolina at the time. From these congregations, the Afro-Christian convention stories took root. It is a story of faith, a story of survival, a story of affirmation and empowerment in the hostile environment of racism and oppression. And it is a stream of faith that flows from the very first African out of which the stream of living water runs. But this stream is also, and will forever be, Christian, coming from the enslaved American Christians who told their stories through the freedom-bound person of Jesus Christ, who sought and seek still for their Lord and Savior to free them from bondage that held their minds, bodies, and spirits in captivity. This freeing of mind, body, and spirit unfolds in the context of America's original sin. You know, the one we don't like to talk about, the sin of racism. But the cry for freedom and the fight for freedom comes from an undaunted spirit of belief in a freedom-loving God, the freedom-loving and liberating Son of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit moving to right the wrongs in this world. Our fifth stream flows out of the stream of living waters, which Jesus offered the Samaritan woman at the well in John 4, 13 and 14. It is no less than the river of God, but this mighty river, which has its source flowing from Africa, surfaced in this new land with unbelievable challenges. Coming out of the Congregational Church of New England, you're gonna love this. If you know the name W.E.B. Du Bois, He's a New England Congregationalist, my friends. How about that? He wrote about the double consciousness of black Congregationalists. He spoke personally and powerfully saying that white missionaries from the North after the Civil War would come to the South and they would set up schools and churches. And white missionaries were, in his words, incapable of or failed to consider there was African culture and African rhythms in African music. African understanding of scripture, an African understanding of the divine, and an African way of being. So they created these institutions with white ways, with white worship, with white culture, in hopes that white Christians would come out of black people. As Reverend Dr. Jeremiah A. Wright Jr. has said, it was a bifurcation that has never left us. So there was this existential struggle to be grateful for those who were rising out of slavery and were being educated and brought along, but also this deep challenge that they felt in their bones, that the white folks weren't listening to them and acknowledging them and loving them for the faith that was already alive in them and forged in the pain, the anguish, and the struggle of slavery. It took special people committed to the stream of living water flowing out of Africa and connected to their hard-won faith in Jesus to blast this bifurcation to pieces. Dr. Jeremiah Wright is such a special person. He served Trinity UCC in Chicago for 36 years. He, get, he grew a church from 87 people to 8,000 members, and during his tenure added 72 ministries on the Southside Church. Under Dr. Wright, Trinity UCC became the largest church in our denomination. And they lived by this motto, we are unashamedly black and unapologetically Christian. Think about that again. We are unashamedly black 
and unapologetically Christian, committed to ending the bifurcation so that it could be healed as one. As we close, receive these words from the Reverend Dr. Iva E. Carruthers that she says in her essay in the book, Flowing as an Everlasting Stream. She writes, the fifth stream and the metaphor of rivers engenders a critical lesson on reparatory justice and reimagining inclusive, beloved community spaces in the spirit of Ubuntu and the Afro-Christian church. Something new has been birthed out of the African principles of coexistence, unity, and parity, not dominion, subplanting, and competition. She continues rooted in the black sacred cosmos. The Afro-Christian church is a gift to the entire United Church of Christ denomination, but much more. The Afro-Christian tradition is not a fifth stream simply of the UCC. It is a mighty undercurrent of resistance, reclamation, and return to the sources of African spirituality, independence, and understanding of what it means to be human. To be human. Think about that. That's what this is really about. This whole thing that we crash into every day is about people that want to be human. That's it. And she continues, regardless of when and how you enter the black sacred cosmos space in the United Church of Christ, you will be blessed by the giftedness of the Afro-Christian church, now embraced as the fifth stream as long as there are some who remember this story, remember to tell the story, and remember to stand watch over the story, the story will live. Thanks be to God for the five streams of our United Church of Christ. Amen. <laughs>